All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Marketo Fu. Uh, this is going to be actually the last one in the beginner track. So I've got about eight or 10 more topics lined out for intermediate. Um, and then we'll see where we land and move on to advanced stuff. But uh, where I want to focus today is just on the basics of reporting in Marketo. So let me share my screen real quick. Cool. All right. So I'm in Marketo and I pulled up the analytics tab from the main uh, login screen, dashboard, whatever you want to call it. And there's a couple different ways you can get at all your reports. And granted, I'm in the Marketo Live for Partners instance right now, but uh, just because there's some dummy data in here we can look at. So it will make a little more sense. But uh, basically, you can either navigate to these little blobs, tiles, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> And, or, you know, use the, the tree on the left, like always. But uh, a few reports, I just want to go through the mechanics of how this works. I'm not going to dive into every report. Uh, I do want to park a little bit on the ones I find most useful and briefly call out that you may not have this Revenue Explorer uh, tile just because that is a uh, purchased add-on to Marketo. It's another, another level of reporting functionality that lets you get an ROI and, um, you know, attribution and... and you know, how marketing has influenced leads throughout uh, what we would call the buyer journey or the revenue cycle model, which will be probably in an advanced or intermediate <laughs> level Marketo Foo session. So, um, but what I do want to talk through is any of these reports, uh, when you're on the basic tab here uh, in the main part of your instance or workspace, there's a subscription button up here at the top. If you click that, you can see all the subscriptions, which granted this, there are no subscriptions right now, but if I wanted to add a new one, I could simply create new report subscription, uh, select which, uh, you know, is it in the default workspace or Revenue Explorer, um, if you have it, subscribe to whichever report and, you know, set the email and then the cadence. Uh, now, granted, you can do this, um, you know, on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. So, unfortunately, I don't see a, a great way to do it every two weeks, but that would be a uh, fantastic idea for the community or, or, you know, just some custom cadence like you can in engagement program. All right. So um, I don't want to create one, but that, that you would just type an email address in that box. But back over to here, uh, I want to park on a few of the most useful reports. So uh, first is, you know, the first one you'll probably ever use is this email performance report. So here, uh, it's, it's actually kind of backwards, in my opinion, of how these tabs work across the top. Because you start with the main dashboard. Um, uh -oh. So you start with the main dashboard. <laughs> Am I frozen? Um, awesome. Okay. So yes, so you start with the main dashboard and it will load up and say like sent, delivered, bounced and you can get a really good snapshot right from here. Uh, where I would encourage you to go next is actually the setup tab at the end. Um, and then you can control the send date, the, uh, you know, any, you can select which emails, you can drag in other filters and settings from over here. You can look at just segmentations uh, if you have them set up for your instance. And you simply would just do that by dragging them in, selecting a segment and going from there. So. To select emails, you can just double click on that and select throughout your marketing activities which emails you want to include. Um, and then the next step would be if you wanted to further segment this by you know, some kind of smart list criteria, say for example region, you could come in here and say I only want leads that are um, you know, in, you can look at lead attributes or any, any other smart list filter that's in your, uh, your instance. And you could say, you know, you only want air specific areas of interest or geographic areas, like by state or something like that. And then slice and dice the report a little differently. But if you didn't want to have any of that, then you can go just to report. This is why I say it's backwards, because I like to do setup, then smart list, finish with the report, not start there. But uh, so this is set to all time. And granted, this is all just dummy data anyway. But uh, what this report will show you is, you know, sent, delivered, opens, open rate, and then uh, percentage of clicks, and then click uh, click to open. What is this? Click to open. Oh, leads who clicked at least one link, then click to open. Unsub, hard bounce, soft bounce, and pending deliverables, and then unsubscribe. You can move these columns any way you want. Um, you just drag them and drop them. 
Uh, so whatever whatever is useful for you. Um, but uh, this th this report gives you a really good idea of you know are you catching all your bounces? Are you um, you know is your deliverability high? Gives you a, it's it's not going to give you like crazy awesome reporting data to dig into and make like super actionable decisions, but it does give you a a quick gut check on the health of your instance and you know just the basic efficacy of your emails and. If your uh, click rates are low, below, well below benchmark for your industry, um, you, you have some uh, some digging in to do about why. You know, do, do some more A/B testing. Try to figure out like, is it the subject line? Is it the CTA? Uh, is there something else about my email that's just not engaging? And this report gives you a very brief view of what's going on, and then all that interpretation is is left up to you. Next report I want to focus in on is uh, actually the engagement stream performance. So it would be this one with the pretty leaf. And you know, a big thing at Fathom is integrated nurture. And you set up the report the same way. You can set up, oh, and the other thing I forgot to add is if you're on an individual report, you can add a subscription from the subscription tab directly here. And new report subscription, refresh report, whatever. And uh, and that's that's basically that. You can also do it from this new menu, new report subscription from I think anywhere on the report. Uh, but yeah, so we set up same way, and then the report itself is going to look only at engagement type programs, and you, it's basically the same thing as the last uh, email performance report, but you get this engagement score deal. Um, you know, just real talk from a Marketo consultant right now is that the engagement score doesn't really tell us a whole lot. It's a proprietary algorithm uh, that Marketo developed. It's kind of skewed, I think, towards 50. It's industry agnostic, so it takes count all emails, all time, everywhere, um, and, and tries to give you a basic idea of like how engaging was your email compared to all other emails that have ever been sent. And it can be really skewed. I, no one knows for certain except Marketo uh, what's in the formula, but it can be really skewed based on send size. Like if you send to five people and four of them open it, you're going to have like an uh, 80 something uh, engagement score. Versus you send that same email to 2,000 people and you have five people open it, you're gonna have a really low engagement score. But it's, you know, you can get better a better idea of how your, uh, your content is working by looking at other reports as well, like landing page conversion uh, performance, or if you have RCA, you can look at the, um, you know, successes in a program kind of thing. So I wouldn't put too much stock in the engagement score, but uh, if you just wanted to look at, you know, how your overall engagement programs are doing, you can actually bucket them. So you can see overall program performance, and then if you blow them out, uh, you can see the individual email performance that was in, you know, each each cast, and you can see the the date of activity, the last activity. Um, so you know, you can you can look at this either in all time or or just the the last cast. So. It's a useful report just to, again, get at the same kind of metrics that were in the basic email performance report. The next one that I want to focus in on, uh, just real quick, uh, my personal favorite is, and if you watched Crew Chats last week, I got the name of this wrong, so shame on me, but the, uh, the Success Path Analyzer, which I actually don't see on here. Oh, right here. So, um, so if you click that one, this one's cool. If you have an RCM is the... Uh, the counterbalance here that, that you would need to have to be able to see this. Uh, what it does is each stage of your revenue cycle model or your buyer journey or whatever you want to call it that we'll, uh, we'll talk about how to set up later uh, is mapped to a different little section here. So you can see, um, and this is, a, this is a question on the MCE exam, or at least it was in the past, of you know how many leads are coming into this stage, how many leads are leaving this stage, how like what's the percentage of those that are being converted and how long on average does it take them to move to the next stage? So this is a very basic model. We talk about from known to engaged. We can see the inflow outflow, see the, oh, so engaged conversion percentage is really high. Uh, we can see kind of like the, these target take a little bit longer to convert obviously than engaged because you're comparing a seven and 24 and you can kind of see the dates of activities and how it, how it all kind of maps out like this. So what this does for you as a marketer is it lets you see in in a very quick report, you know, how how much are you moving through the funnel, the whole thing. Um, you know, getting them to I, I believe this customer stage in this example is like, you know, uh, close to one opportunity. So um, and then obviously not A because there's not not applicable because there's not a uh, another stage following it. 
but um, but this this is a really great report just to give you an overall sense of you know how how are you moving leads through the funnel what's what's working what's not you know where where are things slower than you expect them to be and these are uh, in days by the way so um, the the average time so uh, and you can control setup here and and uh, just like any other report and you know control the time frame and all that then you can select the revenue model to be referencing on it and. Yeah, so that's a really cool report. Uh, the last one I kind of want to zero in on is if you don't have an RCM and you still want to gauge, you know, how successful I referenced this report a couple minutes ago. Is this landing page performance? So uh, in past experience, we had a, a big content strategy around, um, you know, obviously we nurture with you know that useful information in our email that would. Uh, you know, hopefully garner a click and a download and, and, you know, we'd be able to score and then provide more MQLs to sales. It was a very, whoops, a very basic um, uh, engagement program strategy, integrated nurture strategy. So the, what the landing page performance lets us do is we can see all of our landing pages, see how many views there were on it, see how many conversions, uh, conversion being a form fill out. And then um, what does this column actually say? Uh, conversion percentage. Uh, so basically just giving a percent of these. So obviously <laughs> conversion percentage is zero because there were zero conversions. Uh, and then how many new names were generated? So, and then over here on social, if you have uh, social boost, you can, you can see, um, you know, which, which social media source they originate from, uh, which might be useful to your business. Maybe not, uh, particularly B2C. That's, that's very helpful. But, um, but yeah, so this was always a good report for us to reference just to look at, you know, hey, what content is getting the most views? What content is getting the most uh, the most actual downloads? And then what did we do right there? Was it something we spent a lot of time agonizing over the headline and body copy? Is the landing page just designed just that much better than the other ones? Uh, you know, what is it? And again, there's other ways you could get at this, this kind of data. You could just look at overall program success. You could look at... Um, the you know program performance by membership kind of kind of reports, but um, this is just a really good quick one just to get an idea of, and you can sort it ascending, descending, whatever, and see which which programs are on top, which ones need some help, and then try to figure out why. So um, all that said, uh, reporting is a very very cumbersome thing to do in market, or not cumbersome thing to do in Marketo, but it's a very complex thing to master, right? So uh, these are the basic things. Um, and obviously RCA is, is a whole other level. There's a whole certification class for it. Um, and, and there's a lot more you can get out of it. Uh, so, I mean, definitely not a perfect system, but it's it's much better for, um, for getting at, you know, overall program success and how your, uh, all your, all your Marketo programs are doing and how you're acquiring names and new leads and how uh, those two being the same thing. And then how you're, um, you know, tracking success. Like how many of those actually end up being a success? Where are they at in the funnel? How many actually closed one? And then when, when we start talking about how you add program costs to programs, what was the actual revenue impact across all the marketing programs that are involved in? How much did it cost us to nurture them basically uh, versus how much money did they bring in in revenue when they closed one? And that's the kind of thing RCA gets into, but we will get into that on a future episode of Marketo Foo. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them below in the comments. Uh, this is a very, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just scratching the surface here on reporting. Uh, there's so much more that you could do to it. These are a few of, of my favorite favorite reports from the past um, and some of the more common ones. Um, but you know, again, I would caution you not to make too many actionable decisions from just basic email performance data. Try to dig in a little bit deeper. Um, but really always test, always do A-B testing. Uh, that'll be one of the first things that I think we discuss in an upcoming episode in the intermediate track. But until then, uh, this has been Marketo Fu. I've been Joe Wrights, and we will talk soon.